Well hello, some uh, more quad excitement this morning because it's my first four inch quad, never had one before. This is the Cicada 180, um, it's branded Litis RC which is uh, basically AKK Tech's brand. I've been dealing with AKK for a while with um, VTXs and cameras and stuff and this is their first quad. Now you can actually buy the base version or the advanced version. The base version is about $118 US dollars with delivery. The advanced is $138 with delivery. That extra $20 gets you things like an OSD motors that can support 4S. Um, I mean, that's about it. But anyway, it's it's barely worth going for the base version, I would suggest. But anyway, let's see what is actually inside this thing. Right, opening up the box, there are some instructions. There is some foam, and there is the quad. Hey, it's in the box and it's got the props on. I always like that. So you also get some spare props, uh, a little skew antenna, a little spanner, I guess, for taking the um, prop nuts off, some little 3M stickies. I think this is going to be for attaching the receiver, and a little cable here, which is, again, probably for attaching the receiver. We'll check that out. Spare uh, battery strap and the quad itself, which looks like this. Now, I can't go past this point without addressing uh, what you might call the very small elephant in the room or, or the bit of controversy this has caused. It's uh, quite a distinctive looking quad, as you'll see, and people might say, hey, I sort of recognize that shape. Here's the Immersion Vortex 150, uh, which is basically the scaled down version of what would be the Vortex 180, which is exactly like this. This has been modelled uh, practically identically uh, on one of these. Obviously the, the insides are different because uh, Immersion RC do their own firmware and uh, a lot of proprietary stuff there. This is based around uh, the sort of regular F4 flight controller. But um, yeah, it's definitely a clone of the frame. Just to be aware of that, if you're, if you're not into the clones, this definitely is one. So putting that aside, the sort of spec we have here, we've got uh, 1407 3500 kV motors. Just these quite skinny, uh, regular two-bladed props here. I think the camera is potentially the weak point. This is a CMOS camera, but at least has a 2.1mm lens. Inside there you've got an F4 uh, flight controller, and the VTX runs Smart Audio, uh, and AKK sort of came to prominence of, of making smart audio compatible VTXs, so at least they've managed to put one in there. So the real key about this thing is the price. It is pretty pretty damn cheap, um, but that's no good unless it flies half decently. So let's pop this on beta flight, see what's going on. It's a plug and play quad, so we need to get a receiver in there. I've got um, probably this uh, FreeSky XM Plus. If it's the same as the Vortex, I don't see why it wouldn't be. You can take the top off and there should be a space here to come out of. Interestingly on, on this, they haven't quite modelled this after the Vortex. The Vortex had a couple of little holes at the back which you can put the wire through. Um, this does not. So we'll have to look for some routing options somewhere else. But anyway, let's get a receiver installed, let's get it bound on beta flight and see what's what and then we can take it for a test flight. Join me in a sec. Take the screws and take the top off and you get access to the bay at the rear where you've got that little port which is where you attach your receiver. I went ahead and put in my little FreeSky XM Plus uh, using the little sticky pad to put it on. There's not much space here so you can't put a, a big receiver in, it needs to be nice and small. And unfortunately I couldn't root downwards but rooting upwards don't forget that the props are sort of in line with everything so I've got an extra little piece of heat shrink there just stopping my antennas from coming apart and getting savaged by the propellers. Okay so I just want to do a very quick run through of Betaflight to show you what it's got and a few little changes I did but uh, as, as per usual I'm trying to fly it as is without messing around with anything. So what I found is that the your one was set up for zero LX correctly. Your three was set up for TBS Smart Audio, so that was good. Although when I went onto the configuration by default, um, I did find that the receiver was set to BPM, so obviously I needed to change it to S bus. No big deal. Um, I have added motor stop because I like that. Everything else is default here, so it had DShot 600 set. We're running an 8K 2K loop, and I've just set up my um, craft name there. 
PID wise looks like it's got default values uh, the only thing I did was up my super rates to 0.8 so we'll see how that flies receiver wise didn't really change much all I did is add in my aux channel because I've got my XM plus there which I flashed with RSSI on channel 16 it had a bunch of modes set up and it was set to stick arm so I've put arming on a switch and the normal angle beeper and air mode there and the only other thing I did was set up OSD to my liking um, it has a barometer on here which I think is a little bit gimmicky but I thought I'd put it on anyway see how it looks it's, it's sometimes fun and you can sort of prove like you're under a certain amount of meters or you're flying really low um, also this one it didn't work last time I tried this on another box this is supposed to give your VTX uh, channel so yeah be interested I don't see why it wouldn't work but the last time I tried it it, it didn't so this is running uh, beta flight 324 obviously not the latest but again I thought yeah it's fairly up to date so let's see how this works anyway onto the field we go hello and welcome back to the swamp look at it glorious you wouldn't have believed it was snowing here earlier this week well that hasn't done much to dry this out obviously so here today to test out the little cicada 180 see how it goes uh, as per normal we're going to do a little line of sight hover because i haven't tried it yet and uh all being well we'll take it for a proper fpv flight Right, doesn't it? It's like a great deal of punch. This prop's quite noisy. If you're now wondering, hey, where's the flight footage gone? I have to interrupt this broadcast for another episode of FBV True Confessions. So at the end of that little clip, I said, Oh, the props are a bit noisy and there's not much uh, punch power. Now, I flew five LiPos that day and when I got home, I was just thinking about these props and thinking, are these props a bit skinny and, and need a bit more, more to them? They're 4045s. And then I noticed this one was on upside down. If you turn a prop upside down, it still thrusts in the same direction, but it's not built for that direction. It becomes inefficient, very noisy, uh, and of course that inefficiency is going to lack that top end power. Now the question of how did this happen, well I don't come out good in, in either um, prospect. Either it was in the box like that, um, I didn't check it and I also didn't take the props off when I set it up, which is naughty me, or I did take the props off and when I put them back on I put one on upside down, which is stupid me again. So let's forget that happened and we'll speak no more of it. The only reason I mention it now, not because some sort of Catholic guilt thing where I must come and confess, it's more about I did those five lipos on that day and some of the footage from that I still want to talk about. But I did go back today and do another four batteries just to check everything out and I was a lot more happier with the results. But let's go have a look at this flight footage now. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the day one footage. So this is with one prop on upside down. Uh, and the reasons to look at this is because A, it was still flying fairly nicely, uh, despite it having one prop on backwards. And B, I wanted to show how the CMOS camera did in these conditions where we've got a little bit of sun and you can see it darken a bit, but as far as CMOS cameras go, this isn't too bad at all. Also, I noticed that the footage we were getting looked fairly clean and this is on 25 milliwatts so what I thought I'd do after this very first flight in fact was come in and change that to 200 milliwatts because sometimes setting the VTX to a higher power is the sort of thing that does introduce noise into the video and I wanted to see how this would do not completely quiet but quieter Yes, so what we've got here is the day two line of sight flight. This is from today and as you can probably hear, it's a lot less noisy and much happier. So here we are, the Remaiden, if you like, and you'll notice that the VTX uh, 
the power on the OSD is updated, so that's working well. That's good. I don't know what was up with uh, the last one I tried. Uh, and we've still got a fairly noise-free display, so that's all good there. Uh, you can see that today is a bit dimmer. It was a bit colder, and it was uh, a bit more windy. Uh, it, it's always nicer to have the same condition so you can compare it, but if we can't do it, we can't do it. Uh, of course, the other thing we've got on the screen here is the barometer, and this does an okay job. Uh, sometimes it seems to lag a little bit, and other times it's sort of very fast. I can't say it's particularly accurate, but, you know, it gives you a, a decent idea of your height, and uh, it's, it's nice to have, can't complain. But anyway, the quad in this configuration, i.e. with the props actually on the right way around, um, yeah, much, much better. Um, when I flew it yesterday, I was thinking, yeah, it's pretty good, but it's where's that power? Now the, the power's there. I mean, it's not, it's certainly not exceptional. It's not like a rocket ship, but, you know, it's pretty good. You can jab the throttle and you can go up. You can go quite up close to a tree and then ram on full throttle and up you go and over. It's, uh, it's good fun to fly. I think that was the main thing. I could really put it into these turns nice and quickly and it would just respond. And I think the the layout of the components of the quad, having the motors in line uh, and the props right in line with that center where it spins, means the actual sort of flips and rolls were very accurate. You could go into one and come out absolutely spot on and just turn it on the dime as it were. And of course, all I've touched on the tuning is just to up my super rates. Uh, the rest of it is absolute defaults, and it seems to be flying really well. It's just a lot of fun to uh, to fly with. It's it's a nice little quad. So if there's a any issues at this point, it's going to be the CMOS camera. What we can see, and it's pretty much happening as we sort of increase the speed, increase the throttle, is we do get a little bit of vibration coming through to that sensor, which is, you know, fairly typical of CMOS sensors. Uh, there's not an awful lot you can do about that. You know, it's a shame it wasn't a CCD camera, but them's the brakes. Now, I'm flying 4-cell 850 milliamp batteries here, and on a decent batteries, I'm getting between sort of 3 and 4 minutes, which is, is pretty good. Um, if you're starting out, you might want to start on a 3S. You might want to angle your camera a little flatter um, and, and basically start off, you know, going a little bit more slowly, taking it more gentle. So if I can take you back to day one again with the uh, upside down prop, what I want to do is show you what I did. I actually had a 550 milliamp hour three cell battery that I was trying out on a micro and then I had a crash sort of 40 seconds in. I thought you know this is way too small for this quad but let's just put it on there to see what sort of power we get off a of free cell and to be fair I thought it looked absolutely ridiculous this is it it's absolutely tiny that there's too much strap left over but if we could take off and I'm kind of simulating what I would suggest that perhaps a sort of beginner level flyer would fly like I mean you can still do flips and rolls you can fly along quite happily and at the end of it I got three and a half minutes from that battery so just for a bit of fun, I took my XF battery, which is awful, terrible battery, flew it gently, uh, this is day two again, just to see exactly how much time I could get out of this battery. And it goes to show it's all about your flying style. I mean, we're coming up here just shy of eight minutes. Uh, and these, these are the worst batteries I've got. These are literally should be in the bin by now. Just to show you what it's normally like, as you see, I do a slight climb out right at the beginning of battery, fully charged battery, and it sags into sort of the 12 volt area. It's just hopeless. They need to go in the bin <laughs> quickly. So this was a lot of fun. Um, obviously from the first day I flew it with a prop upside down, I came back thinking it's a little bit lackluster on the top end power. Having corrected that, it flies really nicely and it's got a, a reasonable amount of punch. I mean, it doesn't, it's not got the explosive power of like a, a big five inch with massive motors which you can just send skyrocketing in. But it's good, you can you can huff it up there on a, on a 4S and get some good hang time and spin it around. Um, acrobatically wise, it's really nice because the way the center of gravity or the center axis is right in the middle, it spins really nicely on a, on a dime like that. I mean, at the same time, you've got to be very careful with your battery 
um, connectors because these are in line with your battery you don't want anything hanging out but yeah it flew really nicely I'd say as I thought the weak point was the CMOS camera I mean it handled the light okay we had a bright day and a, a bit of a, a dim day and it was just when flying it fast and aggressively you get that little bit of jello that you kind of associate with uh, CMOS cameras I mean it can be swapped out at the same time it, you know it was perfectly flyable it was fine so who's this quad for? Well, it's it's a great beginner flyer, I think, because the price is good. It's not the cheapest ever quad. Um, I've flown five inch quads, um, which have been binder fly or plug and fly, which have been cheaper. However, I've spent time without fail. Uh, I've had to spend time sorting them out and addressing some issues. This was very nice in terms that I could just install the receiver and fly it and it's got some really nice components in here. The Smart Audio compatible VTX is very nice. The flight controller seems really good and uh, basically the flight performance is very nice. It's something you can kind of grow with as well. I mean, as, as a slightly more experienced pilot, I didn't feel I was being held back. Um, you put a 4S in it, you whack the camera angle up, you can fly very fast, you can do rolls, flips, whatever. Um, obviously it will eat up your battery. When you're starting out, starting out with a 3S, putting the camera at a flatter angle and just moseying around, basically getting a hang of it, uh, means you can grow with it. You can up your camera angle, you can get it going, and you can up your battery to get more sort of explosive and acrobatic flight going. So yeah, all in all, it's a really nice little package. I, I really enjoyed this. Anyway, well, thanks to AKK for sending this. I really enjoyed flying it, and I'll be doing some more, of course. And uh, links, of course, to the product are down below. There you go, the Skoda 180 from Littis RC. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.